This is a story about challenges. A story about competition. A story about technology. A story about teamwork. A story about triumphs and setbacks. A story about exploration. A story about the past and future. I'm Caleb Kinslow. And I'm Molly McKinney. And, and this, this is, is NASA 360. 360. This is the continuing story of NASA's sample return robot centennial challenge. At last year's challenge, six teams made it to WPI to compete for the $1.5 million prize purse. It was an intense competition. Not familiar with centennial challenges? No worries. Caleb, let's get them caught up. I'm here with Larry Cooper, Program Executive of Centennial Challenges. Hi, Caleb. How are you doing? Larry? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So, Larry, what exactly is a centennial challenge? Well, Centennial Challenge is a NASA prize competition program. These prize competitions appeal to a, a different class of innovators, and literally it, it's a way for anybody that has a good idea and an entrepreneurial spirit you know, to potentially contribute to the nascent space program. Well, as a whole, why are these type of challenges important? The agency needs advanced technology to do our missions in earth sciences and space sciences and aeronautics and human exploration and that's why we have a space technology mission directorate now. What are some of the past uh, successes uh, that have come from the challenges? Our astronaut glove challenge, like this, mm -hmm. this guy right here, mm -hmm. we were looking for an improvement in the glove so that the astronaut wouldn't get as much uh, hand strain. Two of the people that won our competition have gone on to create companies and they're offering those technologies to organizations that are going to be flying tourists to space later on. We had a challenge which was our lunar lander challenge and two companies you know, that won in those competitions are providing commercial access and support of NASA and other space entrepreneurs now. We're very much interested in seeing these technologies benefit everybody. Now, now can you briefly explain uh, what the Sample Return Robot Challenge is? Well, Sample Return Robot Challenge is a competition focused on robots and the autonomous software for those robots to go off and identify and collect samples. In my thinking, it's kind of like a giant Easter egg hunt for a robot. <laughs> At the last Sample Return Robot Challenge, there were competitors, the rovers they built, and the lessons they learned. There were frustrations and accomplishments. There were setbacks and successes. But there were no winners. So the big question is, what about this year? We are back at beautiful Worcester Polytechnic Institute for year two of NASA's Sample Return Robot Centennial Challenge. And this year is tougher than ever. The teams have traveled from near and far. The robots are raring to go, and everybody is eager to see if someone will go home with $1.5 million. Before we get to the competition, let's talk with Centennial Challenges Program Manager, Sam Ortega. Sam, why are we back here at WPI? So we're back at WPI to do a continuation of the Sample Return Robot Challenge. Why do we continue to keep doing this, this challenge? When we establish our challenges and we develop the competitions themselves, we set the bar at a, at a level that we don't expect to complete within the first year. Generally, it takes us three to five years to complete a challenge. So last year, the teams were getting their footing and getting an understanding and a feel for what it would take for the competition. This year, as the teams have progressed in their technology levels, we are anticipating that we would be able to award some level one prize money. This entire challenge is about autonomy. Now, so why is that important for NASA? Well, so autonomy for NASA is gonna allow us to go research and go search other places, other worlds, go to uh, go search asteroid surfaces, be able to take robots to places we've never gone before. Why are these challenges so important overall for, for technology? Um, NASA is always looking for unique ways, revolutionary ways to solve some problems. With that, we go to the general public, we go to citizen inventors, we go to academia, and we look to small businesses to see if they can't create those solutions for us. What are you hoping to see at this year's competition? We're really looking to see the teams that maybe competed last year to show significant strides in their technology so that they've advanced from where they were last year. Um, again, we're really looking for somebody to be able to go off and find the sample, get to the sample, pick up the sample, and bring it back. Hey, don't go anywhere. When we come back, we meet this year's competitors and the people who built them. Before the competition revs up tomorrow, teams are given one final day to prep their rovers and make sure they've got their game faces on. Here in the pit, these teams are hard at work making last minute modifications and adjustments to the rovers. There are some familiar faces here and of course, some new challengers at this year's competition. What happened last year in the competition? 
Well, last year I had basically just put it together. Okay, so I had just gotten it to barely work. Well, we weren't ready for the competition at all last year. We didn't have a chance, but we came out to show off our robot. We thought it looked pretty cool. <laughs> looked pretty cool. Okay, so what's different now? We're a little more ready. What is the, the strategy you know, for this competition for you? Well, the first one was keep it simple. I went to buy as much off-the-shelf equipment as I could. What's different with uh, with these rovers? Uh, everything, actually. Uh, Absolutely everything. We realized that we were way too complicated, so we took everything back to basics. The arm is, is very simple. It just reaches straight down and picks it up. One huge advantage to having six degrees of freedom on the arm is that the base doesn't need to be positioned so precisely. We have a very robust uh, mapping and planning capability, so we're able to see in 3D. It's been just challenge after challenge. Every Everything is, is like pulling teeth. Challenges again this year with software. The tricky part is being able to tell, is this little white blob, is that just a piece of paper, is it a sample? It's just not fully tested, and so some of the things that worked uh, in a nice, tame environment may not work as well as I expected. Well, there's a lot of in integration challenges, just getting everything connected up and everything working together. Rover uh, 2 is a little moody, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> he chased me earlier. It's uh, our friend and our nemesis. It's violating exactly. the laws of robotics, and I don't like it. The name, Robear, where'd that come from? Well, I'm a teddy bear lover. <laughs> so. I like it, Robear, it's like discovery it, it, and cuddling. Exactly. What is your biggest fear um, out there on the field? that this will run into the lake. The fear is that I will be sitting there watching it. I, I, don't, I can't run up and be like, oh, it's not working. What, oh, I'll just move this. 1.5 million. It's a lot of money. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. What does that mean to you? Oh, Never my mind. goodness. We're going to get a Paying lot of phone bills. calls from relatives. That's a lot of those. <laughs> 1.5 million dollars. Well, we won't be getting it, actually, because we are a non-American team. So we're Canadian, so unfortunately we're not here mm -hmm. for the money, but we are highly passionate about the challenge. We just want to win. That's the, that's the whole thing. Because uh, that's really what our passion and our drive is, is to find new technologies, develop new algorithms, and hopefully you know, push the, the frontiers of space exploration. We really want to be one of the first people to take it to the next level. You know, if we drive off the platform, hey, that's spectacular. If we drive into the lake, hey, that's spectacular. You know, <laughs> so we're in it for, for the whole ride. Just keep trying until someone pulls this off. Getting to the competition was no easy task. Teams had to meet all sorts of requirements and milestones before they could even make it to WPI. And once they get here, it doesn't get easier. Before the competition even begins, judges have to inspect each robot to make sure it meets a list of criteria. Now, I've been watching you guys uh, doing the judging. You guys seem so meticulous. But why is that? Well, we have to keep the playing field level for everybody so that all the contestants have an equal chance. We don't want one robot to have an unfair advantage over the others. Take me through what the judging process is like. Yeah, uh, so far the judging process has been going around, getting to know the teams and looking at the robots and kind of seeing what the approaches are. So when we're going through the checklist, what we're doing is to make sure that they are actually following the rules. Just talking to them about the specifics of their design, making sure they're not using any, any disallowed technologies. For example, there's no magnetic field on Mars, so we want to make sure that nobody here is using a compass inside their robot to help it navigate. Safety, really important, um, not only for the handlers, but also for the public and for anybody who's observing. And also safe to the robots themselves. Some of these robots are a big investment in, in hardware and we don't want them you know, catching fire or damaging themselves or the field. If you're on a real life mission, the weight, the dimensions of a system is really important because you don't have enough space in a craft for different types of equipment. So it's really important to meet as close to real life conditions as possible. But we also go through some technical, a lot of technical stuff. Like I go through the schematics, for example, and I go through the software code. I have some uh, deputies that help me do that. So what are the things that you're looking for? First and foremost is the performance. Will the robot do what it said it was supposed to do? So it's kind of twofold. One, they have to fit the rules, but then we're also interested in, in what they're actually doing and how they're approaching the problems. We're complete with the inspection then. It has been a long day. Inspections are over and the pit has been locked down. The teams may not adjust the rovers anymore. Now the next time we see these bots, it will be time for the competition. Hey, stay tuned. NASA 360 will be right back. The sample return robot centennial challenge consists of two levels. Success in level two could earn you up to $1.5 million. However, before you can compete for the big bucks, you gotta pass level one. In the level one competition, each robot has 30 minutes to go out, find the pre-cached sample, pick it up, 
and return it to the starting platform. Oh, and remember, this all has to be done autonomously. Last year, none of the teams were able to complete level one. So this year, we're hoping for a different story. All right, it's game time, and we are here on the competition field where the rovers are about to be moved into position. Now, the teams can only stand by and watch helplessly as their bots pick up one of these. Well, hopefully. And they're off. Well, not quite yet. Team Wunderkammer has some technical issues and is unable to leave the starting platform. Whatever's stopping it now is probably just something stupid that I did at, you know, 10 minutes before 8 o'clock last night. Next up, Team Kukulgur and their swarm of robots. But one of their bots doesn't leave home. Well, right now, it seems like the three robot strategy justifies itself quite well. They get close to the sample, but just miss it. A lot of things can go wrong. You just hope you got everything set right. But unfortunately, everything wasn't set quite right, and Team Intrepid runs into the back of the starting platform moments after taking off. Now, what's your biggest concern with the, with the course? Uh, that hill. Both of Team Space Pride's rovers are off to a great start. Ah, uh, get away from the telephone bowl. Oh. Oh, oh no, it's still okay. We cleared it. But they can't avoid every obstacle, and both robots run into the fence. Team Arrow has trouble getting off the starting platform. My bet is that it's probably something really small. We're gonna go back to our work area, plug a monitor into it, probably uh, slap ourselves on the forehead and fix it in all of five minutes. And there goes Team UCSC. The robot thinks it finds a sample, but comes up with nothing but air. We aligned it so that it would basically go straight towards the sample, but as you can see, it actually curved to way too much to the right. Team Survey finds the sample and gets in perfect position to collect, but a software glitch ends their run. Uh, last night we were trying to improve that and of course introduced the bug at the last second, right before impound time, so uh, what are you going to do? Team Middleman's Robear takes the course. <laughs> it's moving. This is awesome. But before it finds the sample, it starts smoking and forces an emergency stop. Next up. The tough little robots from Team Mystic Lake. One rover doesn't make it off the platform, and the other makes it a few feet and stops. Well, I'll go find out what happened today. And uh, so yeah, you said you have logs or things to. I've got logs, detailed, you know, logs of all the information and a captured video of everything. Last up, Team Waterloo takes off for the sample, and they're getting close. No one has. Team Waterloo successfully collects the sample. What's left? We have to deal with it. Has to come back to the yeah. get back on the platform. But time runs out before they make it home. With that, day one of the competition comes to a close, and the successful completion of level one remains elusive. So we are back in the pit, and the teams are pulling out all the stops for their last chance to showcase what they can do. Ken. Hey, Caleb. Hey, so what happened today and why are we here tonight? Well, what happened today was uh, we had uh, 10 teams that went through our inspection and we're out there in level one trying their best. Uh, it was a great day for us. We had uh, all the robots moving and doing their things, but no one quite succeeded. And so what we've decided, since none of them actually were able to return the sample back to base, we're going to give them a second day. And so right now you look back here and there's a lot more going on in their brains than probably you see in their hands because they're furiously trying to figure out how to make that little adjustment so that when we rerun it tomorrow, they'll have a chance to do it the whole bit. Well, in general, what makes this competition so difficult? First off, it's fully autonomous. These robots have to operate 100% on their own smarts. Now that in itself is tough enough, but we've made it tougher because we're saying that they have to operate in conditions that would be in outer space, which means no GPS, no compasses, uh, no cell phone towers, nothing that would be earthbound. And so when you combine those elements together with full autonomy, it's, it's super tough. We had much more success than last year in that we had robots out there. We had robots that were finding the target. One robot did pull up the target, but wasn't able to get back. So it remains a very tough, tough job. Teams work vigorously, some through the night, to make their rovers competition ready, as they all get a second chance to prove they're up to the challenge. Hey, don't go anywhere. These robots will be rocking and roving when we come back. And with the whistle, that's the start of day two at the Sample Return Robot Challenge. First up, Team Space Pride. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna hit a tree. Oh! We were planning for that. We're the only robot that's flipped. 
With Rover 2 out of commission, Rover 1 rolls by the sample but can't lock on. It just wasn't our day today, but uh, we'll definitely be back next year. Next up, Team Arrow takes the field. We had an issue with our startup script, mm -hmm. um, which is why we didn't get off the platform yesterday. We're hoping that we've uh, fixed that. And fix it they did. Arrow gets off the platform, but stalls before it can reach the sample. They tour the competition, how are you feeling? A little bit anxious. So at least they, they all powered on. The second robot goes right in the, in the, in the direct path towards the free cash samples. Yeah, it's got it. 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 Nice. With the sample in tow, the little bot just needs to find its way home. How much time do we have left? It's just race, race against the time, and right by now it's like almost hopeless. And the clock runs out before Team Kukulgur can return the sample to the starting platform. You're just moments from showtime. Mm -hmm. If you could talk to your bot right now, what would you be saying? Last minute advice. Um, don't fall apart. Don't fall Please. apart. <laughs> <laughs> well, the robot didn't fall apart. Unfortunately, it didn't leave the starting platform either. So on to Team Mystic Lake who's looking to see if their robots are up to the task. See if the obstacle avoidance works. And just see how they travel on this terrain. So you have a robot stuck under the rock. You're just digging a hole. You want us to east off that one? Yes. With one robot under a rock and the second not moving after the run resumes, the third tries to go the distance, but finds a ditch instead. Up to bat next, Team UCSC. Okay, now if you could talk to a robot and give it any last minute advice, <laughs> what would you tell it? Drive straight. <laughs> you know everything else. As long as you drive straight, this will be good. Fortunately, this time it's uh, looking hopeful. So now it's trying to come back. A mechanical malfunction stops it in its tracks. This is a rather large accomplishment, we think. If you could talk to your robot right now, what would you say? Just climb that hill. Climb the hill. <laughs> climb the hill. If you do that, I'll be happy with you. Robert, after a shaky start, writes itself and takes off. The two motors are, are pushing four wheels and it won't turn well. The axle is bent. It has made it very challenging for it to be able to steer. The stress is too much and the robot starts to smoke again. And now, Team Intrepid off to a much better start than yesterday. The robot thinks it finds the sample and attempts to collect, but comes up empty-handed. Not sure why that happened. Okay, let's see. It looks like it may be moving on to the platform. Come on, baby. <laughs> well, it didn't pick up the sample, but at least it got its way home. Next up, Team Waterloo, who picked up the sample yesterday, but were unable to return it home. And now it started searching. Come on, come on! I've kind of seen it. It has it. The hook is stuck. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's stuck, on, oh, stuck uh, on the collector. So now we hope it's really well, stuck. No, uh-oh, it's looking to try to collect a second piece. We dropped it. We dropped it. We dropped it. Oh, we dropped it, but now it sees it again, so it's going to take another attempt and hopefully... No, it sees it. All right, one more time. Oh, we missed it. We missed it. We missed it. Did it get it? It's got it. It's got it! 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 Home it! Home it! Home it! Home it! Stop! 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 Yeah! Unfortunately, the celebration is short-lived, as Waterloo realizes they didn't quite officially complete level one. We're just a bit past the platform. The black here is not part of the platform. The black does not count as the platform, only the purple and the white. And so we missed it by five centimeters. Still, it was an impressive run and plenty of reason to celebrate. Survey, you are all the <laughs> last team. Well, we're just moments away from the whistle being blown by the judges. If you could talk to your robots right now, what would you say? I would say, don't crash. Don't crash. SR, SR, start, start. 
doesn't always turn that precisely towards the sample. Sample located. Sample rebreed. It just dropped the gun. It's in the it should take the same path back. This is kind of nerve wracking. Oh, oh, that was close. Wow. That was close. That was close. That was close. <laughs> Team survey successfully brought the sample home, but they've got one more inspection to go through. All right, the team did really well. What is that is going on behind us? So right now the team has been re-impounded, so we want to be sure that the team was actually compliant with the rules. So the judges are going to take some time and do a full re-inspection of the robot. The weight, the size, the electronics, everything about the robot, the program. The judges want to be able to go through the entire checklist to make sure that it actually is still compliant with the rules. After final inspection, judges confirmed that team survey successfully, officially completed level one. Let's check back in with Sam Ortega and get his take on this year's challenge. What are your thoughts about how the competition went? So today was absolutely fabulous. Uh, we had a lot of teams show great improvement compared to last year. Uh, two of the teams actually went directly to the sample, found the sample, picked up the sample, and even brought it back to the platform. This was a very difficult challenge. Were you surprised of how well the teams did? Not at all. You know, last year, all of the teams admitted they were spending most of their time last year building the robots. Now they could spend most of their time focusing on the avionics and the software and the control systems, which is really the heart of the challenge here. So to see this much of improvement in the competition, even from yesterday, teams were, they were doing okay. They were, they were getting to the sample. Some of them were uh, touching the sample. They're standing over the sample, but they weren't able to retrieve the sample. So they had overnight to continue to work on their software to get those last final bugs out. And I guess that's really what made all the difference for at least two of the teams. So the best thing about today is we're going to be giving prize money. And I am so excited for us to be able to give away this level one $5,000 check. I think the teams are making progress and doing exactly what we anticipated it to do. Generally, when we develop a challenge or a competition, uh, it's usually set up that it's going to take three to five years for the challenge to be won. So I believe we're right on track for what we expect to be done. Well, another year of NASA's Sample Return Robot Challenge has come and gone. And I don't know about you, Molly, but I have been completely blown away by the bots, the teams, and just the whole experience. Absolutely, Caleb. Not only are we seeing teams go home with money this year, but there have been huge leaps in the software, the systems, and really the overall ingenuity that these teams have brought to the table. So, think you've got what it takes to compete in one of these challenges? do it. Visit nasa.gov slash challenges to see how you can get involved. On behalf of Caleb Kinchlow, I'm Molly McKinney. Thanks for watching NASA 360.